All right. Well, welcome to another episode of Craft Beers Gone Wild, number 11. I'm Crunch Kretzmar here in Chicago, Illinois. Rod J. out of Northern Kentucky, Cincinnati, Ohio. And I am Eric Thomas, Metal 75, with the Massachusetts Beer Review Channel YouTube in Southern Massachusetts. All right. This week's... Uh, episode, I decided to uh, go with something that I'm a little passionate about. For those of you that are following uh, know, I'm a uh, wine uh, guy, so I'm a sommelier, and I always like to pair my drinks up with my food. So I thought I'd go a little uh, rogue here, and decided to do a what beer do you drink when you grill? Meaning, when you what's your you know what kind of food do you grill when you're grilling that you always have a go-to beer that you that you will get and pair up because you know it goes great with it. So that's the uh, theme that I kind of went with. A little hard to explain that in just a regular text message. I had my our marketing manager guy there, Mr. Rod J. Beer Review, kind of write that up, and even he had a little uh, trouble explaining it. I know, uh, Eric, you kind of clicked me a couple of uh, times saying, like, what the hell does this mean? So. <laughs> right. Because basically, basically my, the point that I guess I was trying to make was you can go a lot of different directions with this one. It's not just a right. pony at all. Right, right, right. But my thing is, my thing is that, you know, well, we all have our favorite thing that we like to grill. So with that favorite thing you like to grill, you always like to pair it up with something. So, you know, whether it's wine, whether it's the hard liquor, or whether it's craft beer. Now, with all the new craft beers coming out and all the new flavors and nuances, and craft beers have started to become, you know, just as spicy, just as, you know, um, you know, flavorful and stuff as some of the wines. It has yes. all of a lot of different characteristics that a regular sommelier, you know, knows about wine that uh, you'll have to know about craft beer. So they are, it's not just your dad's uh, jewelries anymore. For sure. So, well, all right. So, I went ahead and picked a theme. Nobody knows what the hell we're talking about, so I'm going to go ahead and start it out. So, <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, the one that I get to and I really like, this is kind of my favorite guy and stuff. This is the Ale Smith X. Now, Ale Smith, they're out of San Diego. And uh, this is one that I really like because this has a lot of flavor to it. Now, for those of you that uh, are really into your IPAs, you know, you really like that and stuff. See, uh, I'm a little, I'm a guy who's a little different. You know, I like my IPAs, but why have a large shirt when you can do an extra pale ale instead of just a regular Indian pale ale? Mm -hmm. I like, you I like this. IPA, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, for those of you that follow the show, they will know why I'm teasing Rod about the uh, IPA. So. <laughs> but uh, yes, this is an extra pale ale. Um, it is 5.25% alcohol. Oh, baby. Um, it's a baby pale ale. <laughs> oh, that's all right. X4. <laughs> <laughs> But the thing I really like about this is I, whenever I have it stuff, I really like it because it pairs up not only with my main meals, but this also pairs up very, very well with my uh, snacks and stuff like with my cheese mm. and things. I really enjoy the flavors and characteristics that I get out of this one. This always seems to me to be my fallback when I, uh, you know, when I grill. This is always my fallback one. Really nice. It's got that uh, nice cloudy orange in there. Um, you know, no little, no carbonations at all. No little bubble, but a nice froth on the head, right there. Uh, got a nice uh, two finger head. We like that. Uh, oh, now that's got a lot of hoppiness into it. I mean, this thing here. It's really got um, good, good, uh, got really good uh, hops to it. I mean, I, you can smell this. It's got green to this, and it's really got that that grassy uh, smell. So, 
it's one of those things I like. I like that it always brings me back to uh, that Saturday, and you know, to those of you who had lawns, you know, who lived on, out on the farms and stuff as a young kid on Saturdays. Every Saturday, whether rain or shine, no matter what, for three hours every Saturday, I was out mowing the lawn and stuff. So you know, being the oldest boy but the middle kid, you know, my sister she didn't have to do it. My younger brother, of course, was too young, so. Of course, I got the good stuff and I got to drive, but you know what? That smell and the nuances that I get out of here with that just brings me back to those days. I hated it then, kind of love it now. Nice little citrus in there, a little pine. It's got some pine in there. So I always like pine and stuff in there. So. All right, well, let's get a little tasty taste and see what we come out on the palate. And usually when I uh, do this, how I like to, what I like to pair up with this is usually a, um, a really nice uh, thin chicken breast, boneless chicken breast with there. And I use a um, garlic and roasted mushroom um, spice mm. on there. Because I like the roasted mushroom, you know, on there and the garlic. Because really, this right here really brings out those flavors a lot. It's got a nice uh, sweetness to it. But it still allows that um, those flavors of the mushrooms and the um, garlic to pop out. So sounds pretty decent. Yep, just like I remember it. Nice. It's smooth. It's crisp. It's clear. It's really got a nice um, soft. I want to say. Soft uh, texture in the mouth. This is really good if you would have like um, cheese. It goes really good with cheese because it doesn't. It's not too hard on the cheese, but it's not too soft. It's just kind of a really good. It's like a medium size mm. uh, guy. It's not the biggest guy in the room, but it's not the smallest. But it definitely can hold itself. So really nice. Uh, like I said, the head's still hanging in there, still lacing the glass there, pretty good. Um, I don't know what they rate this on. If one of you guys can pop on, I don't know what uh, like uh, beer rate gives this, but I'm definitely before we give out those numbers on this right here. Like I said, it's always my fault too, so I'm actually going to be a little, uh, you know, more uh, biased on it than most of my uh, ratings. Um, I'm definitely going to go, you know, 4.5 on this one. I really, I really like this a lot. Yeah, and. Uh, to me, it's always my fallback because, like I said, it's not too weak, but it's not too strong, and it really pairs well with um, a lot of. I mean, you can hold up with a lot of the um, meats and stuff, as well as chicken, as well as any of your steaks, and it can also go with the cheese. So, four point five on my point. What beer is it again? It is called the Ale Smith X. There you go. It says on, uh, I got it up here right now. It says on Beer Advocate that the bros gave it a 93, and out of 385 Beer Advocate uh, reviews, it gets an 88. Okay. okay. So it's not, sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. yeah. American Pale Ale is the style. This is an L. Smith X Extra Pale Ale? Yep. All right. Yeah, so. Rape beer has it as a 96 overall and a 98 for style. All right. All right. Excellent. Well, awesome. Well, then uh, there's people out there that actually know what the hell they're talking about because that's what exactly you? what I give it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's funny that I go down rape beer and I start seeing yeah. stuff in the threes. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's nice when it's not too far apart with. Yeah. <laughs> Three six three seven three four. It's like, wait a minute! You just said it was up here. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of four six pops up. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but come on. Who, who are they? They're not like they're the Massachusetts wine review guy. Trust come me, on. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah, Malt liquor reviewers. It's a hot <laughs> pod on these sites for sure. So <laughs> especially rate beer, I find that that's way more out there than beer advocate. Just because they rate it not only overall as a beer, but they rate it. By style, so it might be a one overall as a beer, but it could be a 99 as that malt liquor. Who knows? Right, right. Yeah. Well, this is definitely, like I said, definitely one of my fall too. I've been drinking this for a few years. I uh, really like it when I uh, grill. 
this is the guy that I pull out, number one, because it comes into the big one pint uh, yeah. bottles. And uh, so it's always good that actually gets me uh, through the whole grilling process. So I don't have to go back into the house and grab another one. Uh, yeah. Then I can just grab the I can just grab one more to uh, finish out my meal and you know start my uh, dessert. Now the the lowest one that I see is actually untapped, and they have it as a three point seven one average. All right. But some some around the four level, but then some couple at five, but then a couple are down around three. Mm -hmm. So untapped yeah. isn't too bad because it gives you a drinkability. Now that's off of 17,069 ratings, so they got a pretty good universe there. No. Um, so again, uh, get back to how your palate is too. Well, just go ahead and give me that guy's IP address. I got a couple of buddies here in the south side of Chicago. <laughs> we'll go talk to this guy. We'll uh, see if we can get that review up a little higher. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> I've, I've heard good things about L. Smith, though, so it would surprise me for it to be yeah. good. But I always like the X, you know. It's kind of funny because whenever, whenever I have it, and my buddies, you know, my buddies come over and they see me with that, they think it's poison. You know, oh, did you make them poison? You know, because it's got that nice big X on the bottle. Oh. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Not completely moonshine yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> so what do you have there, Eric? All right, I got the big boy here. I got the uh, I got the one that it seems like's making its rounds around. Well, I don't know if it's making its rounds, but it's definitely got the uh, the, the notoriety and the name involved with that. As far as it's concerned in the craft beer community, it's a Skip Hale Ale. It's okay. rated number ninety six out of two fifty of the best beers on Beer Advocate. It is the Trillium's Congress Street IPA. Ooh. And that is... A little applause on that one. All right. Good. Good. <laughs> that one is uh, brewed. They got two locations. One is in the Fort Point region of Boston, and the one closest to me is in Canton, Massachusetts, which is outside of Boston. That's probably 25 minutes from where I live, so that's quite convenient. Um... <laughs> they say that this is on their website a 7.2% alcohol by volume. They use an American two row barley, a white wheat malt, a C15 dextrin and dextrose malt. They use Galaxy and Columbus hops. They use a lot of Galaxy at Trillium, as mm -hmm. I recall. Um, they say our flagship American IPA highlights distinctively aromatic Australian Galaxy hop. The nose bursts with pine, citrus, rind, melon, and pineapple. Pronounced flavors of peach, clementine, and tropical fruits are accentuated with moderate bitterness and balanced by a light biscuity malt flavor. And most of that I would agree with. It's it's definitely your hazy New England sort of a heady topper looking beer. And by the way, I think this is much better than Hetty Topper. I think this should be number five, not Hetty Topper. But anyways, enough of that. <laughs> you get a Hetty Topper up there. I forgot about that. Yeah. It's I, 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 I don't usually drink a lot a lot of IPAs with with grilling and barbecue but I think I think th I think that I might have to start really really doing that because I like to have depending on what kind of a spice blend that you're using in your barbecuing and your grilling this could go very well with cutting some of with cutting through not only just the fat in your foods but right. even some of the spice level but I think it would go well with that multi complexity that it's got and the white wheat being a very um, silky smooth and refreshing sort of a taste, I think it will cut well through um, chicken and pork and anything with a little bit of a bigger sort of a fatty content. Ah, good, good, good. And the nose, before I get to the taste, the nose is definitely um, pineapple, grapefruit, orange juice. It's straight up a juicy hop flavor and, and, and quality to the nose. You can pick up that white wheat malt, which is which before Trillium and maybe Hetty Topper uses it. Before those two guys, I never really thought of having a white wheat or having any kind of a wheat malt inside of an IPA, and it certainly tastes like it's got that mm. very silky, smooth, super smooth mouthfeel. It's about a light to medium, more on the medium side, definitely more on the medium side. 
It has those biscuit light, biscuity malts, and it definitely has that juicy hop character. It's got enough malt underneath it to support the hops. It's not just a hop bomb. It's not just a hop mess. It's not like drinking 120 minute IPA. Everything's balanced really, really nice. So you get those nice malt, um, bready, white bread, biscuity malts to support that juicy hop character, which again, I think would even go with a spicy and dewy sausage. Maybe not so much um, like steaks and whatnot, but I think I would like a, an American stout or porter with a steak. But I think this is a pretty good all-purpose style. It almost has a, a, that Saison kind of an earthy green hot mm. sort of a yeasty flavor as well. So it's very similar to those things. And if you like these kind of um, more of a juicy hop quality and less of a of a bitter, leather, piney kind of a note or floral note. You might really like a style like this, and I think it's quenching enough that it can cut through the um, the fat and some spices and clean the palate and reset yourself for another bite of that grilled whatever it is you're eating. All right. Good, good. Gets a 99 out of 171 Beer Advocate scores, and somehow the... Um, the beer advocate folks in uh, Massachusetts have not looked at this yet. <laughs> so, what's your overall rating on that one? Oh, uh, this has to. I don't. I'm trying to not keep. Not trying to not have any bias when I say this, but I think this is definitely the best um, American style single IPA that I've ever had. I definitely. Think it's got a lot. It's I think it's an easier drinking beer. It's less bitter up front and hoppy up front, but I think the malts and the hops work a little bit more in in sync with each other than even say in the heady topper. I think the heady topper is a little bit more caramel malt forward, and so it's a little bit more abrasive in the bitterness than this. But again, if you like, it, it, it almost drinks like a like a wheat beer because of that white wheat malt giving it that soft silky smooth mouthfeel, which is, I think that's kind of the style of the New England IPA. So if that sounds like that's um, up your alley, try a Trillium beer or any sort of style IPA, that hazy IPA from New England. Yeah. Totally recommend it. Trillium's got a good reputation. So you still haven't given me your point, though. Oh, let What's me give point? you a 4.5 out of 5. No, nah, all right. Definitely All 95 right. out of 100. There you go. Nice. A plus. <clears throat> so. All right, Mr. Rod J. Guess that is me. What do you got over there in the uh, in the, the Kentucky side of the river? <laughs> well, this is actually from Cleveland, home of the NBA champion Cleveland Cavaliers, and this is. Oh, yeah, well, why don't you just welcome Mr. Uh, Dwayne Wade uh, back to Chicago. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Right. You mean Mr. Uh, I don't stay healthy all season, Dwayne Wade? <laughs> <laughs> well, they got rid of Derrick Rose. That's yeah, 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 thank you. Why thank are you doing up? I'm too healthy, Derrick Rose. <laughs> Ow, my knee. <laughs> <laughs> but this is from Great Lakes Brewing, and this is the Chill Wave. Double India Pale Ale. So I am an IPA guy. <laughs> I am more of a double and triple IPA guy. <laughs> I believe in going big or going home. So surprise! Was, oh so, my God! He just pulled. He just pulled an Easter egg out of the damn. <laughs> This one comes in at a 9% ABV. Wow. 80 IBU. Uh, I'll give you the ratings towards the end of what the other sites have it as. But this is probably close to being the best double IPA I've ever had out there. Um, wow. It ranks very highly. You take a look there. Now with Great Lakes, they actually filter before it goes to glass, so you get great clarity on the beer. Not much of a chill haze at all. When it came out, nice two-finger head down to about one finger right now. As I drink this down, it'll lace the glass nicely. The aromas you get out of this, you get the hops, you get the citrus, you get like that grapefruit, but you also get a great 
kind of a creaminess type texture that comes out. I mean, it I mean it comes out of the glass without even trying. The aroma just is so free flowing on this one. You get the orange, you get you get orange, you get like pineapple in there. It's got everything you would look for in a double IPA. It's got a nice kind of candy sweetness to it. It's funny the color is kind of like that golden orange and. I saw somebody talk about one of the beers oh. like this before, and it, they said it's the color reminds you of the old guy in Jurassic Park in the top of his cane, where he has a little ball with the fly. Oh, the yeah. Cane. That's the kind of color you get on this, and it's just yep. it's, it's nice in the light. It's nice out of the light. You just get a nice good look at it. When it's in the light, you just see all the carbonation just streaming right towards the head, and it looks like someone just dropped a nuclear bomb in there. I mean, it's just so... Huh. Explosive. Um, as far as the taste and everything with it, it's it's pure silky smoothness to it. It gets on the tongue. 80 IBU, and you do not taste it on the tongue. It's just kind of that smooth. You get a little bit in the beginning, kind of the IBU saying hello, I'm here, and then it just smooths out with a nice creaminess to the texture. No harshness going down. And they only sell this in four packs with ABV, and four packs would do a lot of people just fine to have that for the night. I mean, you might want a driver if you do a whole four pack of these. Mm -hmm. Going down the throat, it just goes right down there. You don't feel carbonation being too overcarbonated. You don't feel anything as far as any astringency really on it. You might get a little bit of a tinge of kind of that that uh, alcohol type taste you get on some of the double IPAs, but it's so smooth. It's almost just like taking your medicine, you know, it's just, here's my medicine. I'm going to take my medicine. You're used to it. It's just that good as it goes down. Now, if I'm like grilling something like this, this is something I would like to have usually with something like ribs. Um, oh. You can actually, a double IPA, you know, it's good for a lot of the meat, so you can do this from anything down as, as simple as a burger up to, like, maybe, like, ribs. So on those lines, you can probably put pork chops on the grill and still enjoy this somewhat. The versatility of it also allows you to take it, and if you want to make something of a spicier-type dish, it goes well with spicy stuff, too. So you have some nice flexibility. You can play with this one. And it's one that you're not going to rush through. So if you're grilling, it's one that actually matches up nicely that you can sit there and enjoy the whole time you're going through and not feel a rush to kind of just down that beer. You want to sit there, let it warm up a little bit, and really enjoy it. So for me, this one is rated as a 4.75. It's almost to that almost perfect type level. Like I said, probably the highest rate I have for like a double IPA. If you look out to untapped, they actually have it on average at 4.09. Uh, rate beer has a 99 overall with 98 for style. And... Beer Advocate has a 94 from the people, from the fans, I guess. And then the bros had it at 90. But the problem with the bros is, from what my understanding is from reading the information, the bros had, haven't reviewed anything since 2000. So wow. if they went back now and tasted this, I bet it would be a higher score than what it actually was back then. Um, but this is one you just don't lose. I mean, this is one that I put in that not to pass, pass on category. It's just that good. Uh, especially if you're an IPA fan, if you can, you'll get this and you'll be happy and you'll be in Wonderland with it. But this one smooth. Nice, nice. This one that when you get to the end of the four pack, you're almost in tears because it's gone. <laughs> 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 That's how good this one is. Yeah. Now you can see some of the lacing as it just works its way down the glass. I mean, it hangs in there and. Great Lakes does some great work out of Cleveland, Ohio. So anytime you see some of their beers, it's always worth a try. They have another one called the Lake Erie Monster. That's another one like this. That's very good, too. Almost can go head-to-head -head between the Chill Wave and the Lake Erie. Maybe one day I'll do a show between those two. But um, they just do a fabulous thing. And they're kind of one of those brewers that seem to take their time when they make stuff. Um, I don't think I really have had anything that's been a bad beer from them. It's probably the only one I'm not a big fan of because I'm not big in that style. It's probably the Dortmund or Lo uh, Lager. I'm not a huge lager person, so the Dortmund I'm not as huge fan of. But even that one isn't horrible. It's just not a style I prefer. Yeah. Well, I I did uh I did the review talk with the uh, Edmund Fitzgerald. They had mm -hmm. the uh, Edmund Fitzgerald one. Yeah, Florida, that, right? Yeah. Right. And that was a very good one. That was a good. Enjoyed that one. 
Well, yeah, I mean, like you said, whatever. Uh, most of the what they put out is uh, usually pretty good. I think they're going to be probably. I I would have to guess in the next uh, couple of years. I'm sure one of the big you know guys are going to come along and scoop them up like they did. You know, Goose Island. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I hope wouldn't. not. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, they're definitely. Yeah. It could be out there for that. I mean, you may see. You may start seeing some stuff like we're seeing with some of the other brewers though. Mm -hmm. um, you're in the process right now where you're seeing Victory Brewing team up with Southern Tier to merge companies to compete. So right. you might have a couple microbreweries. As we see more of these collaborations, some of these companies may just come together and form a new conglomerate. You just never know. Mm -hmm. right. But yeah, but Great Lakes around here is kind of like how Trillium is up there. I mean, it's just a well known beer name, and you know you're pretty solid when you go there. Well, I'm going to enjoy this one. Well, I was going to say, Crunch, you want to go, but it seems like your dog might be chasing the mailman right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> somebody is back back there. So. Come on. Uh, well, I'll be going to back and check and see what that is. I'll be right back. Well, uh, uh, Eric, if you have a beer. <laughs> I'm going uh, to put the line on hold. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Usually that's what I do on the J Wednesday nights. So I take take care of the volume. Okay. That's what I was gonna do. Like hold please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put some whole music on. <laughs> so yeah, this, this I'm trying to remember here. I think it was I think it was this year was the first year that I actually got my butt in gear and went over to Trillium. And the first time I was there, it was like before a New England Patriots game, a playoff game. So that probably wasn't too smart of an idea to go there. I stood in line for an hour to get a 64-ounce growler of this beer. And I had never had it before, and I knew I had to get this beer. And I got the beer, and I tried it. I'm like, I, I don't know if that was – I don't know if I'd wait in and line in and out for an hour ever again, but it definitely was worth my time to wait for that thing. I can see why people go real crazy for that. And the other thing that they seem to do, like a lot of your other breweries, probably uh, most notably, probably like, say, Ballast Point. Right. They seem to do a lot of variants of their, of their beers. Mm -hmm. So they have the Congress Street IPA, and the one that's, I think, in the top 20 from Trillium on Beer of a Kip, top 250, is their Dry Hopped Congress Street. They do a lot of different dry hopped beers. They have a Fort Point Pale Ale that's really good, and they do a Dry Hop Fort Point Pale Ale. They do um, a Galaxy Double Dry Hop. They'll do Double Dry Hops. They'll Dry Hop it with Columbus or Centennial or um, any number of other kind of hops. Like right now, if you go on their website, you can get you know double IPA versions, um, double Mosaic Dry Hop Fort Point Pale Ale. So. They really try to, I don't know if they really try to experiment, but they're definitely at least keeping, you know, popular base beers around, and they keep them around by changing up the recipes slightly. Now, Congress Street is, in my location, a 32-ounce growler is $9 plus a fill-up, a 64 is $17, and the... Um, normally I think a bottle, they don't have bottles right now, but I believe normally their bottles are probably in that 8 to $10 range for one of these bottles. So not a terrible oh, yeah. price point. Yeah. Oh, you can take Crunch out of timeout corner. He's back now, too. Uh-oh. <laughs> there he goes. Um, but, yeah, up in your area, Trillium and Treehouse are two that I want to check out at some point. I have not gotten my butt out to Treehouse yet, but definitely like what, well, I think it's even more limited than Trillium. You have to go on their website and on Treehouse, and, and I think they're only open on like Sundays. I think they might do a Saturday and Sundays, and you have to go there to the tasting room and get there at the right time, and you have to know precisely like with Trillium and probably like with. Um, the people that make the Hetty Top or the Alchemist, what it is that they have in stock. So uh -huh. you got to know what you you got to know that you want those beers that they have there. Don't go up there expecting they might have the Green Julius at Treehouse and not even have it. You wasted time driving up there. Yeah. 
I think if I went up there, whatever they got, I said portable in my Exactly. Just pour it straight in. <laughs> now, Trillium considers themselves a farmhouse style brewery. And I guess that just kind of means that they're a little bit of a. Saisons? Yeah, they do a lot of. They do different saisons that are really good. Um, and they, they actually have one called the Sun Shower Super Saison at the moment. Uh-huh. Wow. Which is um, 8.5%. And it's got Pilsner, white wheat, and flaked wheat malt. So it's definitely uh, it's definitely an American twist on a Saison because those things are never intended to be that high in the ABV. Well, what you got, Crunch? Is your glass empty? Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, sorry about that. Yeah, my uh, neighbor stopped over. And we have a nice, uh, you know, Chinese store um, restaurant next door, and she saw that I was still here working, so she brought me over some uh, dinner. Hey, so, nothing wrong uh, with that. Yeah. Go good with an IPA. Yeah, yeah she can go. She can come to the back door anytime. So, uh, <laughs> Get out my back door. <laughs> All right, I have the McKellar Winbeck. Oh wow! Oh. Wow, you got a McKellar? Yep. You big dog. That's tough. There you go. And this right here is 6% alcohol. And this is the uh, Winbeck, which is a sour, um, I think it's a sour wheat. I think that's what it is. It's a sour wild ale, that's what it is. So it's a sour wild ale. And I've had this before. And um, you know, I, I like it because of the um, you know the the uh, sweets and stuff in it, but it's not over you know power sweet. It's not like a candy sweet. Mm. To, me, it's been, to me, it's been always been kind of a nice little you know little sweetness to it. It um, you know it's got that nice uh, little cloudy light orange you know on the nice carbonation. You can see the see the carbs popping in there. Uh, it's got a nice, it's just got nice little, um, you know, flavors and stuff that just kind of pop in there. You know, it's a soft little, you know, uh, kind of hard to say. When I was a young kid, we had a little crab app, a little green crab apple um, tree in our yard, and every year, you know, we they fall down and stuff. We had to rake them up. We had to rake them up. And, you know, after a while and stuff, you know, your hands, you got that smell around your shoes and stuff. This has got that, that little green crab apple smell to it, you know, a little sweetness on there. But then there's also kind of a, a, a you know, kind of a, 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 love, a leveler, I want to say, a leveler smell, like an, like an apricot or, you know, uh, something in that, you know, even like a little clove or something. Hmm. It's just right in there. It's really nice. It's really fine and stuff. So, you know, like I said, I had this a couple of times. Um, I'm happy to find it again and to be able to uh, bring it out. So I actually found this like uh, three days ago. So I grabbed it in the last bottle. So I'm kind of hoping that I still have all of that same uh, flavors that I remember. But I, it, it, to me, it's that green apple. Now, to me, green apple doesn't represent the fall time. To me, the green apple always reminds me of the fresh, you know, beginning of, you know, in the middle of summer thing. Hmm. So, but not so much the fall. It doesn't. Not the green apples. When you got the, got the red apples, the granny, or not the granny apple, the, uh, the you know, Mac, the Macintosh and granny stuff like that. Green usually. Right. right. Yeah. So. But um, I now I do understand. Like I said, there's six percent alcohol now. Uh, this does have um, um, saison uh, in it. Saison. Saison. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's gonna say saison. Yeah. I'm guessing. So, I'm guessing the yeast strain in that particular beer is what's causing that green apple flavor. I think in other styles of beer, that mm-hmm. might be considered an off flavor of the brewing process. But it sounds like. The uh, yeast is probably doing exactly what it's designed to do in that beer. All right, all right. Well, all right. Then we get a little uh, tasty taste. See, like oh. I'm out in the mouth. 
So tell us if it's doing its job. Yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> because those Belgian sort of sours and saisons can be all kinds of funky, but on purpose, obviously. Yeah. Well, um, this is definitely that sour, but it's not like that sour you get, you like, like you cringe, like when you bite into a you know real sour apple and you cringe. No, you would think so with that green apple flavor, but it's not harshly, nor is it bitter. And the fizz, you know, the, the uh, you know the carbonation, you would think it'd be like a lot of fizz and stuff into it. You, you don't get a lot of that. It, it's really nice. It's um, just kind of a nice, nice, fresh. Um, sweet sweetness with uh, that little sweet tartness. So I like that sweet, sweet tartness. So, so this, with, you know, with that this, sour, with that sour apple, does it like does it remind you anything? Does it like remind you like of a apple now and later or something or sweet? Tart? You know, actually, it actually reminds me of like a a, a fruit roll up. If okay. you had those, those little fruit roll ups like that, a little sweetness like that, and you get that, you first get into it and. It, it kind of gives you that first initial jolt of sweet, and then it just kind of like tames out. But it's not like those uh, hardened candies, you know, the hardened candy. When you put that in, you've got that tartness for a long time because it doesn't last long. The uh, uh, sour apple tartness doesn't last really long. What this would actually be really good for, and unfortunately not so much for the grilling, you know, it, it would be pretty much for the salads. Mm. More on the picnic table on the salads. This right here, if you had anything that had some walnuts in it, if you had a salad with walnut, um, a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, goat cheese in there, this would go right good with it. It would break, cut right through it, um, giving it that little uh, apple uh, tartness into their sourness, and that'd be really good. But um, I also. Think can one of you guys look this up? Is it, is it, is it supposed to have like the, what's the, there's something else in it. What's McKellar is it again? It's the uh, Win, Winbeck. It's the Winbeck. There it is. Let's see. Yeah, so that's, I was going to say, you said Cezanne, but it's a sour ale. So, mm -hmm. it's got a little bit of that sour, there's that tartness there. Yeah, it's a, it's a, isn't it a sour? Isn't it a sour wild ale? It's well, it beer probably is wild. I mean, wild because wild sours are part of wild. Yeah, beer advocates actually considering it a farmhouse saison. They are okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'll go with them because I was looking at Untapped, and Untapped is often wrong. Yeah. Well, they call Miller Lite a um, uh, pale lager. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not uh, pale, all right. No. Man, yeah. they don't know it's water. <laughs> uh, they tell you to a malt liquor in a paper bag. So I know. <laughs> but uh, this, like, like I said, this right here is a nice little tart. Definitely go great with the uh, salads. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, definitely salads and the goat cheese. You know, definitely goat cheese. Uh, cow cheese, probably not as well. Goat cheese, a little creamier, a little uh, richer. I think this go really good with it. Um, I definitely, uh, you know, like it for that as part of uh, any type of um, meat or stuff like that. I would only the only thing I'd be grilling with uh, some sort of a fish or a really light white meat, you know, like maybe a pork. So that would probably be as far and the meat section I would go with this personally. Um, this was my this is my experience with the uh, wine and food pairing and the flavorings and stuff. That would be as far as I would go with it, but definitely any type of uh, asparagus, uh, rhubarbs, go with that. But definitely the salads. So, I like it. Um, it's not my favorite. I'm going to jump off the, the, the boat about it. Now, I remember the name. Now, if I can remember correctly, the name is a, a combination of two gentlemen, two friends. The one guy is uh, Borja from Denmark. It's, it's a uh, this is a uh, beer from Denmark, and uh, he, apparently he was uh, the teacher, hmm. and then it, and then he went ahead and his buddy, him and his buddies, got it together and started uh, playing around with uh, beer that they wanted to get you know they wanted something to get drunk, you know All <laughs> they're right. in Denmark, you know of course what else, <laughs> and they just 
kept playing around, kept playing around, and all of a sudden they came up with uh, this, and then they merged the two names because the Keller is the is Buddy's last name, okay. and uh, you know uh, Mikkel is the uh, first guy. So hmm. combination, they came up with that. But yeah, it's in Denmark, and then it's also it got a couple of. Uh, they're, they're almost like what you were talking about earlier, Rob, mm -hmm. about um, you know these small breweries uh, branching out in different areas, and right. um, you know I think they're coming. They have some in um, San. I want to say San Diego, but that's probably not right. But I know they have some stateside here. I think they have one in San Diego, yes, and in San, San Francisco. Oh, okay. Looks so. like they just opened one last year in San Diego, so that's a brand spanking new location. Yeah, because we get some of theirs actually in Kentucky here, where I'm at, you know, in Ohio. But but it's funny, you know, I mentioned I would go ahead and defer to Beer Advocate. Ray right. Beer actually has it listed as a sour wild ale. Yeah, they do. You're right. Yeah, wow. so I guess the contention's up there for either one, but. That's Belgian in nature. I usually go to the website and check them and see if they make it and see what they say. <laughs> <laughs> to me, their website's kind of hard to decipher. They don't really list what it is that they make very yeah. well on that website. Not at all. Mm. But just kind of more like a big blog of what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think they probably decided to uh, just focus on what they do and uh, leave yeah. the variety. <laughs> the hell with the variety. They'll leave that to the... Uh, uh, you know, the guys like you guys to write that stuff up. So, uh -huh. <laughs> you know. So, but uh, uh, overall, for, yeah, for a uh, sour, for a uh, sour, I uh, definitely would rate this one here at about a uh, three point uh, six. It's not bad. Right. It's really good. I, I like it, but I like, like I said, I like apples though because it has a, uh, it has a personal connection for me. So. Okay. I like the little green apple sour, so I like that. So it kind of adds up, you know, on there. Overall, uh, for a you know a food a food pairing one, not gonna rate up there that high. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna probably get that one around the uh, two two point five, you know, for a food pairing. But overall, general, if I'm gonna have something like this, it's gonna be nice and hot out. It's gonna be uh, growing. Mm -hmm. It'll probably be uh, picnic time. Definitely picnic time. Salads, goat cheese on it, um, some walnuts on there, and probably throw in some uh, radishes on top. And this thing here would be a great, great access to it. It will amplify. Pick it up. Throw some, uh, you know, white pepper on there, and I'm good to go with that salad. And this would be a great sour to go with it. I want that apple. Could you use it with that one of the grilling fishes? Do you think? Like if you had swordfish on the grill. If you do, but you're gonna have to have a really light uh, white fish, you know, like a, you know, you're really gonna have to have a, a light white fish. You get something too gamey, like a pike or yeah. something like that, it's not gonna work. But um, you know, you something like maybe you get a bluegill perch. Yeah. You know, a perch would work because you know a lot of people like to put lemon on it, yes. and the sweet, the uh, the sour of the of the apple will go ahead and give it a nuanced kick. To the uh, whole lemon. So instead of instead of having lemons, you're actually putting like a little green apple flavor on it, which will give it a new kick up. So all the um, Gucci Gucci guys will go ahead and uh, feel like they're uh, kicking up a notch. Gucci, Gucci guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, uh. <laughs> what do you have there, Eric? When you're on the one. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I still, still, still going truly. I'm strong. 2016, baby. Still go, yeah. <laughs> I got the seven. I got the. Uh, this is. They come in. It's 25.4 fluid ounce bottles. The seven. Oh yeah, you get big bottles. And, and I think I mentioned it while Crunch was attending the dog situation. They have 32 ounce sprawlers. 64 ounce growlers, and they, I'm not sure exactly when, I know it was within the past month that they came out with 16 ounce cans, and, and you got to imagine that that's in response, you have to assume that that's in response to Treehouse and the Alchemist doing the Heady Topper, that they got their tall boy cans, why can't Trillium have their tall boy cans? <laughs> right, market demand. Of their yeah. hoppy orange juice. <laughs> That would make sense. 
Yeah, because I definitely think that um, this New England style. I, I hope it's not, but I definitely think that that's the new. Tr that's one of these trends that seems to be building momentum. Is having you know, drinking an IPA and it basically tastes like a Saturday morning fruit juice or something. <laughs> <laughs> doing that thing, but it seems like the, maybe anybody else might have an idea on that, but it seems like the trend right now in IPAs is to have everything grapefruit flavored. Well, yeah. I'm seeing a lot of if you're trying to do different fruits, that's what a pineapple is becoming more popular, a lot yeah. of different things. Um, grapefruits out there, of course, and stuff, but a lot of people are rushing with the sours, trying to get stuff in that area. It's just everybody's chasing the carrot, it seems, at some point. And it's like, that's why I like some of the ones that take their time and actually make yeah. good beers. Like, I like, like, talking about Great Lakes. They stay in their lane and they focus on what they do yeah. best. They're not yeah. going out there chasing. They're not following, you know, they're not trying to follow these trends of trying to have, say, like, you know, obviously a grapefruit beer, a session IPA, um, what else was a trend lately? That seems to, uh, the nitro beers was yeah. like that was a trend. That's I think that might be on its way out because I think that Sam Adams tried with that nitro project. And I don't know to me personally, even in my area where Sam Adams is big, yeah. I just don't notice that it's you know I don't notice that it's gained any momentum, but I don't notice that it's that it's not sold. Yeah. I just don't notice that it's gained a whole bunch of momentum. It's kind of just like there now. It's just like here it is, and there's another option. Um, on the show. It's not going up. It's not going down. It's just kind of a, yeah. on a flat line level basis. Yeah. Um, I almost thought at one point in time that maybe even having a um, a sessionable sour beer might be a thing that was going to start to come out. Yeah, but not yet. No. Well, for a while, people were chasing peanut butter the last <laughs> over the last year. Oh, Lord, what? That was a big thing. <laughs> Which no. I did, I did like the the Claw Brew and their uh, Sweet Baby Jesus was. Mm. Well, it is pretty good, it's still out, but uh, wow. but some tried it and it just didn't work for them. No, you're not going to see truly with peanut butter beer. Right, right. <laughs> right. Uh -oh. <laughs> they do some coffee stouts, which are good, but no peanut butter IPA. Yeah, no, yeah no. I mean, right now the big one that I actually like, I just did a review on the Stone Delicious IPA. Mm. And Ron had commented on that one, and I wasn't really impressed by it. It was kind of underperforming to me. Yeah. But on the same thing, Stone came out with the Stone Mocha IPA, which kind of blows everything away. And that they actually took the elements of a stout and put it with the IPA, which were my two favorite classes. So I was like in heaven when I tried that one. It was uh, like black IPA. And it's like, why would you waste time doing this other one when you could have just focused all on this one? Yeah. So much better yeah. pushing this. Yeah, that's probably that's probably where they get into the problem. Feeding the demand, you know. Everybody wants to make everybody happy, and then you know it just doesn't work. Well, the problem yeah. I see is that, like we were talking about it on Twitter the other night, I was talking with some other people that do beers, and some of these companies are so busy just trying to chase stuff all the time. You know, they're putting stuff out there. It's mediocre when it could be putting yeah. out great stuff. And it's like, are they using focus groups correctly? Are they bringing people in? Is mm -hmm. it just in the um, brewery says, I like this one, let's run with it type thing. I mean, how are they actually testing it? Because they get these beers out there, they go to market, they don't sell as much. And then the effect that you have is if it doesn't sell as much and it gets dumped, as we know, we buy craft beer, you have to almost check dates now. Because some beer... Right. Yeah. You, know, and you see, I was going to bring, I was going to bring the Victory Hop Ranch. That was the beer that I was going to bring tonight. Yeah. And, I, and, and I looked it up on, online to, to get a description of the beer and it comes to be, and I bought the beer maybe two or three weeks ago, it comes to be that that beer comes out in December and it leaves the shelves in February. And I bought it a few weeks ago in my local beer shelf. So I'm like, uh, I don't know yeah. if I want to bring that to do the discussion tonight. Maybe I can rip it a new one on my own beer channel. <laughs> <laughs> but, a little, little test run to see if it's still okay. Yeah, right? and, and, and the weird thing was I couldn't really decipher on that bottle kind of like our uh, beer reviewer down in Virginia, if you know what I'm talking about. You know, yeah. kind of the day on the bottle, guys. I had, a, I had a look on the bottom of the bottle, and it looked like it, you know, it was very, very faint, and you couldn't even read what it was. It was in some... Like smudge at that point, yeah. Well, yeah. The, prob the problem you have is, though, like that was brought up, is, okay, so these companies make these mediocre beers, and they go to the shelves. They sit on the shelves, so someone comes along that's not as familiar with craft beer. They buy it. It's an older beer. It's like, well, this tastes like crap. I might as well just go back to my Bud Light or Miller Light or whatever it may be. 
and then you start affecting what people are yeah. getting the idea of craft beer. So, well, that stuff comes out so often that you got to assume that anytime you pick it up, it's going to be fresh no matter what. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I went to I did a beer run yesterday, and I looked at um, it was actually um, at a store that had Great Lakes, and it was the Great Lakes. Um, I hadn't done a review yet on the Edmund Fitzgerald or the Elliot Ness. I think it was the Elliot Ness. Yeah. I'm looking at two six packs next to each other. I pulled, picked one up. One said Best Buy. August 23rd. The other one said, like, Best Buy 624, right next to each other. Wow. So it's just these shops are out there, and they're not always moving the inventory around like they should as well. And that's well, that, well, that's a big problem. That's a big problem with a lot of the stores. Um, unlike, you know, like you said, when I, when, I, uh, when I really started out and started getting good, when I, was, I was with Costco. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I said with Costco, what, you know, what we do there is you, well, we always made sure that, uh, you know, the older ones were pulled up front, and the, you know, the newer ones down in the bottom, things like that. You were really, you know, really hands-on, really getting into there. Yeah. And you had somebody in the alcohol department. I mean, there was somebody in there. When Costco first started their whole wine program, I was the gentleman that they uh, started it for. You know, they, they didn't have these guys that were sitting in the wine industry or in the wine section, in the alcohol section, that would guide you through. And uh, when I came aboard, I went ahead and convinced them that this is what they need. And so that's how we started selling more and more because they had somebody to talk to. Everybody doesn't know, like, Rod, you know, was just saying, you know, you get these guys who will buy, you know, something that's outdated and thing, and then, you know, they don't know, and they'll sit there and blame, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the winery, or they'll blame the uh, brewer and right. stuff about it when it's actually not their fault. Right. And, and then you you actually lost a potential customer, and one customer will then go ahead and tell somebody, and then that customer, and you, as we all know, when a friend tells you something. You kind of believe that more than anything you read online. You right. Know? Well, so. it's like when you were at a discussion, um, it started out because I brought up talking about the uh, Ballast Point Pineapple Sculpin. Yes. And I wasn't very impressed with it, and I thought it wasn't what I expected. You got a pineapple smell, but you never really got a pineapple taste. It really didn't hold it as well. And I said, is it overrated, or am I missing something? And People I knew online chimed in on it. Everybody got into talking about these different beers that are out there. You're putting mediocre stuff out there, and it affects how yeah. people perceive craft beer because then they start going to try it, and it's like, well, I don't know what all the hubbub's about. These mm -hmm. beers aren't that good, and it's because they didn't get a fresh beer possibly yeah. or it was something that was wrong with that delivery, and that's where sometimes opportunities yeah. are missed. If you're going to make a very if, – if you're going to keep pumping out – again, Sculpin's the one that, that – that rings in my brain as having so many of these different variants. I mean, Stone does that a lot, you know, here and there. But it's kind of like, it, it, you know, if, if you're going to do all these variants, you got to ask the question, is this variant that we're, that I'm going to brew and I'm going to put out on the market, is that going to be any better than than the original product, you know, you know, the, the base beer? If it's not better than the base beer, then I don't think it was worth your time to put it out and produce it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I and, and not only that, but the uh, you know, but the uh, the wines or the uh, sellers, the uh, store owners, you know, aren't as educated about the product that they sell. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm I, and I'm sorry, anybody who watches this and who owns a liquor store or anything like that, um, I don't mean to offend you, it's a, but there are those ones that will just you know buy it to sell it because you know right. this this is hot. This is you know they know the name. And it doesn't move, and it sits there, and it sits there, and it sits there, and then you know eventually it sells, but it's way past the shelf life and stuff. And they don't understand that they could have actually talked to the representative; he would have taken it out and re, well, you know replenished it for free, gave them new stuff, you know, and then the customer would have been happy. He sees it that I bought it; it's mine. I got to get rid of it. I'm not going to eat it, you know. And it, you know, they're just not, you know, um, I don't want to say educated. They're just not told that, you right. know, to, to do it. And unfortunately, it hurts, you know, the uh, the bottom line people, which are the brewers, you know, or the people like yourselves who are, you know, you give the ratings and stuff. And then, uh, you know, somebody like Rod gives a, he might, you know, Rod or even you, uh, Eric, will give, you know, give a great rating, stuff like that. Someone goes out and buys that same stuff. 
they drink it, they go, well, what the hell are these guys talking about? You know? <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to look at this one now. So this is actually one from where Crunch is near. So this is from Shorts Brew. Yes. It's the Huma Huma Huma, <laughs> Huma, Huma Lupa Licious. So uh, sounds not, Hawaiian. Huma not, Luma. Not not based on the uh, Willy Wonka or anything like that. Actually, it's named <laughs> after the hop variety of plant they use, which is the I guess Huma Lupa something. Humulus Lupus is the hop plant they use. But anyway. This one has like five different hops in it. It's actually described on the bottle as a complex malt and hop theme park in your mouth. Um, I talked about the other one from Great Lakes. That's probably my favorite double IPA. This is probably my favorite IPA. Again, it's a nice one for grilling. You can take it as easy as, like I said, down to like a burger, um, any type of beef type product. Um, you know, with an IPA, they're so easy to match up. You can put a stuff with... Uh, Anything for spicy food. If you got a kid there, doesn't want, or not a kid, but a person that doesn't want the grill and they want pizza, you can have it with pizza. I mean, IPAs are very flexible. Some of the stuff you yeah. can do with it. Now, when it came out, it actually did come out with a nice two to three finger head. Very nice. It's starting to break down now as it starts to lace the glass. Again, it has that nice deep. I guess you could say what a golden amber color. Um, this one has more of that chill haze on it. So. I guess with this one, I don't think I don't think they, they don't filter this one in a bottle, but it still has that chill haze. So at least I don't think they do. They I don't have any particles floating around. That's the New England style chill hazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wicked, wicked chill haze. <laughs> does it have any of that space age technology? Yeah. No, it doesn't have that in this one. You'll, you'll soar right to the moon, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out! You're gonna freeze up. You're gonna freeze up. But that aroma, you get that essential IPA aroma you usually expect. You know, you have that lead with the grapefruit, the citrus-type notes, tropical notes. Everything in IPA always starts out with grapefruit for pretty much, it seems, nowadays. But it's a nice, pleasant smell to it. Um, it really climbs out of the glass. You don't have to really sniff too hard. You can just enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, reading my uh, Boston like, accent on the on a group chat. Yeah, everybody fucking movie's gonna blow. Space age technology, bro. What <laughs> <laughs> can you run, Jake? <laughs> but as far as the uh, the taste, it really brings a nice, if you can say, like a crisp, refreshing feel from an IPA. You know, a lot of times you get hit with that bitterness up front. This one, oh, by the way, ninety six IBU. And 7.7 .7 ABV. So, like I said, you go big or go home. So, this is like a big IPA to really enjoy because most of your IPAs now don't hit this level. You got to go into the double type area. Um, the mouth flavor you get, I mean, the taste gets in there and it gets all around the mouth. You feel it from on the tongue to the cheeks, on the roof of the mouth. The duration is great on this one. It has a nice long duration of flavor. You can sit it down, relax, still have those flavors working around your mouth. Um, one is you can also match up after you're grilling, you get done, you want to put a cigar in your mouth. This one matches up nicely for that as well. Nice. I mean, as smooth as an IPA can be, because people don't associate smoothness as much with an IPA because of the IBU, but this one has that nice, crisp, refreshing break. It's, it's got that nice, strong texture to it. Um, carbonation sits so nice on the tongue. It's got everything you possibly could want. I mean, it's just that good. The feel of it is just it's just smooth. I mean, you you get in this, you climb into the bottle with it. So whether or not it's a roller coaster, we'll just say no, a complex malt and hop theme park in your mouth, it's got a great amount of balance between the malt and the hops. I mean, with five hops you're putting in this thing, yeah. that's something you got to really work through on how you want to have that handled. But for me, this is one, like I said, probably my favorite IPA. So I this is like a 4.75 for me. Um, for what I enjoy from them, from your average now, score. Now, like, now their hops, their, their hops are from uh, are local, right? Isn't that like they're, they're local? Uh, let's see on the bottle here. I didn't see. They don't have anything on there. Humpa lumpa. All right. Um, it, it doesn't say anything that I see on the site here. 
Okay. But they may be. Some places do get more than get their local hops now. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I wonder if it was like a local hop because they're up there in the uh, upper Michigan area. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah I, Untapped has them at a 3.778 average, which is low in my book. Oh. Yeah. But, but Rape Beer has them at 95 overall, 94 for style. And Beer Advocate has it 90 for the fan score, the 94 by the bros when they used to do it back in – up to whenever before 2000 was. So it's a great overall beer. I mean, it's one of the top IPAs out there. It's just smooth all the way around. Again, it's an IPA that you, you don't really race through, that you sit there and enjoy. Um, you know, you could easily sit here and probably drink more than you want to, and it just goes down that easy, but then you're missing it. I mean, well, you get to the, maybe getting a buzz a little bit quicker, but mm -hmm. you're not really getting the full enjoyment you want to get on a craft beer. You want to take your time and, you know, kind of work through it. But Precisely. It, it is one you can easily, if you're not careful, my, my glass is empty, you got to get another one. <laughs> and, yeah. and a 7.7, 7, and I think this one, they do sell a six-pack, so that'll catch up with you. You do a whole six-pack, probably. All right. Yeah. But it's definitely one I would recommend and one I definitely enjoy as well. All right. Well, it sounds good. Like I said, uh, you know, definitely uh, beats all the uh, – Space alien technology. Well, that space uh, rock is supposed to be really good, though. Well, no, it was. It was. Yeah. Remember, I, I, I really enjoyed it, except for, you know, when it messes up my uh, computer and <laughs> takes over my mind and stuff like that, you know. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, that one, the one they have there that, um, you did the one on Soft Parade, right? Yeah. That Soft Parade is, I think, pretty phenomenal, too. Yeah. Especially if you're a wine fan, I think it's got a nice mix. That's what, yeah, that's what, that's what, that's what you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it wasn't bad at all. So, so. Well, all right. Well, that's another uh, night in the uh, books there, guys. Always uh, great to have you around and it's up there. Thanks for uh, bringing us together again there, Mr. Rod J. There. <laughs> From the murky side of the bridge of Kentucky slash Cincinnati, Easter. and of course we had Gary Thomas there, and thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Massachusetts and stuff. He's got to get into his car and get home. Yes, have uh, a and stuff. Yeah, talking the how the car, the car. He's a wicked man. It's a wicked man. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. If you sound like a pirate, you're probably from Boston. Yeah, that's right. That's right. right. Well, I gotta go. I gotta go ahead and get ready for the uh, Mr. Uh, Rod, you know, uh, Dwayne there to show up here in Chicago. Dwayne Wade. You, you yeah. bet. You bet. Uh, we gotta have a big parade for him and everything. I'm sure. Cool. You know. Yeah, he's all over the news. Uh, Is it a parade for him coming or Rose leaving? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Probably both. Two birds and one stone on that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Two wounded birds. That's right. Well, I'm Crunch Crunch right here. You can always follow me on uh, BottleBarleys.com. You got uh, Mr. Rod J here. Just type in Rod J, and all 26 pages will pop up, and you can be able to connect with him. Rod and, J, uh, Rod J Beer Ventures. There you go. And then there... Go ahead. What's yours, there? You got um, either search for Thomas Metal seventy five on YouTube or search on YouTube for Massachusetts beer reviews. All right. As always, feel free to uh, hit up Mr. Rod J. He'll let you know what the uh, theme of the uh, week is going to be, and come in, join us, talk with us. Uh, remember, we drink beer, but we don't bite. So. And Rob, good why, don't you, why don't you go ahead and close this out? Keep drinking good craft beers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. <laughs>